Hey guys, very good afternoon to all of you. My name is Ajay and I'm going to actually today talk about what is the variant data type. Uh, where do you use it and what are the benefits of the variant data type and at the same time what are the disadvantages of variant data type if you're not going to use it wisely right welcome to the channel welcome to the video number 349 i'm extremely extremely privileged to share this that we are just you know going to pass 350 videos amazing videos on excel excel vb and access and access vb on this channel and guys we have also past 1200 subscribers in just you know one month of a time uh, last month only you know we we actually have the hundred one thousand subscribers on this channel but now in just a you know one month of a period i've got it's more than now 1200 subscribers and i really want to thank you all of you and i also want to thank all those people who are writing me in and who are giving their suggestions who are giving their you know the questions and who are also appreciating the videos so much right i can go on and on and i can read out those wonderful comments but i think it's better you go and check out all those different comments you know uh, which uh, every time when you uh, uh, see some video and you really find it so useful so informative and you know as a result i mean the comment which you actually the the kind of a feeling i can say that you know which you share on the channel it's tremendous it's really pushes me to go to the next level it really pushes me you know that i should now go ahead and maybe do something extra you know for my society right so this video this channel is these all my videos are dedicated to all those professionals across the world who want who want to learn excel excel vba access and access vpa or maybe who who are at somewhere in the you know intermediate level and they're looking for the more and more examples and in fact this channel when i started two years back this channel was more on the advanced side it is only you know start when i started developing the channel you guys uh, you know uh, keep coming back and you 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 asked me actually to you given the suggestion that i should also have the basic you know the beginner level videos so now i can very proudly say that we have got the combination of all the videos right many of you ask me they they keep on writing me on the comments or even they send out the emails to me that they, they are looking forward uh, you know for the beginner level courses on this channel now guys i am again repeating because i'm i've been repeating this in many of my videos when i start the video as an introductory introductory part that what you need to do is you can write it down First, you need to start with the Excel VBA introduction series. If you are a beginner or maybe if you are at the intermediate levels, still I would suggest you to go ahead and check out all these videos. The Excel VBA introduction series. You got to watch these videos step by step. When you click on this introduction series, it's very easy for you to find it out which video to first watch. As you can see here, we have the part one, part two, and then part three, and then part four, and then of course, you know, are like introduction. Uh, the life of a variable error discussion so accordingly you know you can start watching once you are through with the excel vba introduction what you need to do is you need to watch another playlist which is excel vba loops for example this is the one when you click here you are going to you know, see 25 amazing videos here here we will have some basic videos as well so you can see here it is again divided into part wise so first watch all these videos part wise part one part three and then maybe you can go ahead and you know you can pick up these advanced level videos you don't have basically part one or part two because you see the videos are so clear it says basics of uh, for next loop it says this video say for next loop part two so obviously this is the part one and this is the part two. so you will be able to understand that whether the videos are basic whether you should watch it or not right so I tried my best to make it simple then you can go ahead and watch uh, you know another video which is another playlist actually is the excel vba collection loops like for example you see here access vba collection it's, would see somewhere here excel vba collection loops as well now there are 42 videos. i don't know where it is but you can find it out uh maybe this one yeah that's the one so when you click on the excel vba collection loop and you can see here i have started a series one series two series three and these are all where we don't have find any series they are all the very advanced level of the videos and so first you should watch series one series two series three and you can scroll it down there are a lot of um, amazing videos here we have full videos on this particular category what you can do after you are through with the collection loop you can further go ahead and now you can start watching the excel vba with the workbook and the sheet 
this will tell you that what what happens when you want to compile the data from the different different workbooks right and there are a lot of lot of other stuff this will include the loops as well so you can go ahead and watch this and then you can come back and then you can maybe go ahead and start watching the excel vba functions after watching excel vba functions this is the video if you click on this now if let's say you want to start you want to learn how to make the functions then if you scroll it down somewhere here you would see that is a video which says the basics of the function look at this so why don't you start your you know learning from here once you are to have the understanding how to work with the functions maybe you can pick up all these you know videos by one right so here i have talked about all the time date functions also apart from the vlookup right and there are a couple of more like for example how to pass in the parameters from a subroutine to a function so you will understand a lot of things right so you're through with this you can go ahead and watch the excel vb arrays now arrays are the most you know beautiful thing in the excel vba right one should differently learn excel vb arrays you cannot expect you cannot be a good programmer if you don't know the arrays right and because again as because i always take care of your request i'm not somebody who's just gonna you know know the request either it is coming on the channel or you know, on on my email uh, you talked about you raise the concern yet yeah, that there are no actually basic videos on the arrays i started this you can see 336 and 334 344 video and you will understand how to make the arrays and because these are the extremely advanced level videos here i did not do any discussion on that and you can see it's just a long time back guys it's a for example this video is a video number 94 i think it's a two years back i recorded this video right so we have come actually a long way credit goes to you 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 help me you know in surviving Trust me yes i wouldn't have got this much of a you know nice the great respond I, I don't think so i would have been able to you know survive by this long seriously thank you so much hats off to all of you and a great you know uh, thumbs up to your the questions also because you know most of the videos are my you know more than 80 percent of the videos are here and attempt to you know answer your queries and ultimately the big video became so awesome because of the you know that awesomeness in the question that finally you know it attracts more and more people every day so thank you so much so this is how you can start after watching the excel vb arrays and watch this excel vb file handling in this file handling i talked about how to deal with the folders how to deal with the text files which is very important how to compile the data if you have 10 15 or 50 workbooks text files you know in some folder how to copy the folder from one place to another and you know all that kind of a stuff once you are through with this then i would say you can watch uh, excel vba connecting powerpoint with excel or excel vba connecting uh, outlook you know with the excel or you can also watch excel vba connecting access with excel so these are all the videos and these are all 350 videos uh, i specifically in this video talked about the excel vba programming because most of the times i receive the questions on the excel vba not on the excel or not on the axis right so maybe i will talk about those you know subjects in my next video but this is something which i wanted to tell you right so now we are going to actually talk about where you are going to use the variant data type guys when we use the variables uh, and what we do is basically variables are it, it's a basically a place where you can store your information right now if you if you're a beginner uh, then i want to tell you that variables are of different data types we have the integer we have the byte we have the long we have the single we have the double and then we have object as well and then we have the variance as well i'm specifically going to talk about the variance and when you when do we declare the variant data type what are the advantages and the disadvantages of it right so uh now what happens because as you know integer if you don't know let me tell you integer byte long single double they are all actually used for the numbers the decimals you know for example single double can use for the decimals as well uh, i will talk about that in my separate session but for now you just need to understand that string we use it for you are, if your code actually is going to hold a text value or use the integer byte long single if it is going to be a number whole number if it is a decimal number you can use the double and the single okay single and double also holds the whole number at the same time not just the decimal value but what happens for example you have a task of summing up these 130 number here let us say right i'm gonna tell you 
here you are going to use the variant data type now if if i want to add these 130 testing case and i go to the visual basic and let me insert the module here so when you're going to insert the module for the first thing uh, say discussion i just write discussion on variant now guys i'm going to declare a variable for example i'm going to declare here dim i okay and uh, dim i as for example i'm going to declare it as integer dim j as integer this is how we declare the variables right now integer can hold up to 32,500 and something value you can google it it's not really that important but what important is that to know you should have some idea so basically this holds around 500 something sort of this five six seven i think a minus two positive number any number which goes beyond that you know teacher is going to give you the error the point is if i want to add them for example i declare here as uh, another variable which is integer and i write here m equals to i plus j then what will happen finally this m output we would like to store in the a3 cell so this is how you write right the value which you want to evaluate that always comes to the left side of the equals to so here we're gonna write this now you know this is the code and this will this should run right so we're gonna run this and i can show you in the local window if i just on this local window if you don't know what is the local window i've already talked about in about these windows in my under the playlist excel vba introduction series so if i just run this what will happen you see that uh so i just forgot to do one thing we haven't declared any value here so what i will do i will simply say that i equals to it, it is going to be equals to a1 dot value okay and similarly j equals to it is going to be equals to a2 value right so this will have a and j as 130 respectively so if i just run this now you see that i got the i here 100 and j and as expected we got the answer 130 and perfect and we got the value printed in the a3 Very nice what happens sometime uh, now if i just go ahead and declare this as uh, maybe let's say uh, 50.4 .50 maybe let's say and i delete the answer again guys what happened when you're going to run this code just as i said integer actually is used to hold the whole number not the decimal so what will happen your code will work it will not throw any error but you will get here 50 instead of the 50.4 and that can be a problem if you're looking for the really you know very much uh, accuracy in the data right because this is not going to give you the correct answer this will give you the 80 if you're working in a call center industry or maybe uh, an industry where service level matter a lot you know then you know even the point decimal you know even the point uh, one decimal two decimal difference can you know back up so there chances are high that if you're going to give them this kind of a code you know you might be in trouble in the future right because generally what happens when when the code runs we have the habit if the code runs no problem if there is no error then let's just send it out to the team right but it's not always the same case if even the code runs you still have to do the debugging right run on the f8 mode and check everything whether the variables are correct or not right so how to cop up with this kind of a situation right so uh, now let me tell you one thing uh, if i just uh, go ahead and i just write here let's say uh, a and i just write here b now if i run this what would be the answer right you know a and b are string their string means that is a text so how can an integer hold this value so obviously when you're going to run the program you get the error type match so maybe this thing i mean taking care of the number at the same time taking care of the decimal numbers uh, you would also like to make a code which can take care of the strings as well the text values as well so how are you going to do that so in that scenario where your value can change because we declare integer uh, or the other data types only when we are very much sure 100 percent sure that they are always going to be you know as a um, you know going to hold that much of a value it will never go beyond that for example integer holds 32,000 something number you know that it can never go beyond that for example if i talk about the byte byte is a data type which holds only 0 to 255 numbers so if i'm very much sure then i can use it but if i'm not sure and also for the reason that if i'm not sure tomorrow they can be string you know then i don't declare them as integer or any other data type byte long single no do that what we are going to do we are going to declare them as variant guys this one right variant means that let the vba decide everything so here i'm going to declare this as as well as a variant right let me cut 
at this line and put it here. You will see the magic. Now what will happen when I'm going to run this value, this code, look at this. My type now, it's coming variant and slash empty. Previously when I was running it, it was telling me, you know, there was no slash and there was no variant. It was simply integer because you have defined it as a integer and we they will not do any chance to, you know, we try to change that data type. It will go by the user's mind. In this case, VBA is going to use its own mind after reading the content. Now, once you're going to run this line, VBA will understand that what I actually is going to hold. And if I run this, you see that for the string here, right? So VBA has given this data type string. And you know that I'm going to use this as range A3 equals to M, you know, and I plus J. This basically will work as concatenation because it is a string now. So plus sign for the string values works as A, B. And obviously because you can't sum the numbers so it is going to work as a concatenation as as the emphasis sign you know so have your answer a b if you just go ahead and maybe let's say you declare here 55.6 and here you're going to declare it as a 50 um, or maybe i just first of all i just show you this 50.3 and 4 now what will happen again you will not have the error because you look at this the moment i execute this line variant data type is changed to the double not the string VB is judging the data, you know, when while running the code. So what else you want, right? So you have the answer now. Because both the data types are now double, which is a, you know, obviously a part of uh, numbers family. So you will have the 50 plus 4, which is going to give you the 54. Perfect. Now, how about changing this, you know, 50 to 50.6, let's say. Now, if I want to run this, I'm going to run this now. What will happen? Now, if you're wondering that, you know, or if, if, if you're judging that this is going to give you 50, then that's a mistake. You are doing it because I told you it is going to take everything, going to accept it. If you remember the last time, it actually given the double data type. Now, it, it could have given the single long data type as well but because the double is the highest data type in the VBA which can hold really a big big number and also for the reason that double also holds it is considered for the decimal also you know by default the data type double was given right so if you run this right now again see that i have a double and there's no problem in 50.6 the value will come as it is there will be no removal of the decimal and finally you will have your answer so variant we use it when we are not sure right now we don't write this as you know as variant then also it means the same thing but i would still say that you know always write as variant because so that when somebody is going to read your program they should not you know uh, should not think that basically it's your ignorance towards the variables because if you don't write as variant sometimes people think that you know programmers know actually to declare the variant right and he might have missed declaring it as the you know integer or byte so he just used it so i would say it's a very actually not a really a professional way of writing though many people do that again i think it's a lack of knowledge if you run this you see again you have the same thing variant will be declared so what is the point of writing it i mean so it, it we declare it so that you know our audience should know that if, if we are writing here as variant then that means we know that why we are using the variant because sometimes what happens uh, people even write the variant because they don't want to really use their you know uh, the brain uh, on deciding what data type they have to choose they don't want to really go, go into that kind of a thought process that let me declare it as a byte or single or you know double because everybody knows that the variant is going to be something which will be universally accepted and the VBA will create you know everything by its own so what is the need for me to really bother whether this should be a string or this should be a byte or you know that kind of a stuff and this is something which even in, in your interviews you know people ask but you need to understand one thing technically speaking there is no problem you can declare all your variables like that but guys one thing is very important and that is uh, that variants actually take a lot of space in your memory. If you go in, in the Google and you try to find it out some, you know, if you type in that, what are the data types in the Excel VBA, you will get to see thousands of the links there. Just pick up any link uh, which comes on the first page and see that what are all those data types, right? So there you will understand the variant holds a lot of space. So we're hold, holding a lot of space, giving a lot of space for every, you know, we, uh, this basically the data type called variant simply means your program is gonna be significantly you know have a 
in in will have an impact in terms of the speed your macro will take much longer time then you know if you declare it as in a very proper way if you declare this as an integer or string whatever it is right so variant guys we use it not to impact the speed remember now i'm not talking about the small codes because in the small codes it hardly makes any difference but you know sometimes you write very big macros so there you need to take care of these things so don't really put the unnecessarily you know space on your memory on the vba because it's going to consume your memory and then obviously it will take little time so that's why we use the variant for the reason that we when you when you cannot predict the future of the variable it can be a number it can be a decimal it can be a string right let the vba decide so always use it very wisely right don't use it uh, if you are sure that this variable is never going to be uh, you know exceed the value 32000 then don't really declare there's no need to declare it as a variant you can declare that as and simply you know integer also okay. so these are the best uses of the variants which every programmer should know variant means that the vp is going to decide the future decide the fate of your variable depending upon what you are actually executing so let me know if you have any questions guys and uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel please do subscribe i will be back again with some other exciting stuff thank you so much guys for watching and have a wonderful day